There seems to be a great need in the body of Christ, a learning, an understanding of how prayer works. Because many today in the church, many of God's people are not getting answers to their prayers. And I think fundamentally it's because God's people have yet to learn how to pray. In fact, the disciples said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. Now, I want to teach you how to pray. I want to teach you how to get answers to your prayers. And I'm going to do that by teaching you from the Scripture. So if you will, turn with me to the book of Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 11, and we're going to begin reading in verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. For verily or truly I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, And be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive. And if you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, folks, Jesus makes it very clear if you want to get an answer to your prayers, first and foremost, you must forgive. You cannot have unforgiveness in your heart and expect God to hear your prayer. So that's a big part right there. But if you know that you have forgiven everybody that's ever trespassed against you, you have no unforgiveness in your heart, you've got that dealt with, then move on. Jesus said, when you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. This is where I think the church fails. And I think that a lot of folks are being taught by this Word of Faith movement today that just say it, just blab it, like my pastor used to say, blab it and grab it. That's not praying in faith, folks. That's not what Jesus teaches us. What Jesus is teaching us is that we must petition God. And when God gives us an answer, to our prayer or to our petition. In other words, you get a word from God. Whatever it is you're praying about, God answers you with a word. Remember, we pray in faith. And how are you going to receive faith except by the word of God? Right? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. That is, 
When you're petitioning God, when you're asking God for something, you've got to believe Him for that. And how are you going to believe Him for it if you don't have faith? So God has to give you the faith to receive, the faith to believe for that which you're petitioning Him for. Otherwise, you're just asking God in unbelief and doubt. Now, Jesus said, if you don't doubt, you shall speak to this mountain and it'll be cast into the sea. You and I, and I've said this so many times, I don't know if folks listen, but you and I cannot speak to a mountain and remove a mountain. You, you and I can't do that. But if we'll petition God, if we'll ask God God can remove a mountain. And he can do it right before our eyes. If God wanted to, he can move a mountain, can he? The same God that spoke it into existence. Amen? He's the creator. Out of nothing he creates. And I, I want to spend just a moment there because I was going to do a full message on this. We're living in an hour where people are being told that they create. Now this might offend you, but it needs to be addressed. You and I are not creators. But ever since the internet came along, we hear that all the time now. If you provide content for YouTube, you're a creator. You created that content. I want you to understand, folks, creation does not take place when you and I make something out of something. In order for us to produce a... a, a broadcast or produce a video for our YouTube channel, we have to start with something, right? I got I have to have a laptop or a computer in front of me, my, my microphone. You understand what I'm saying? But when God Almighty creates, He creates something out of nothing. He begins with nothing. This is creation. But Satan comes along and tries to get God's people to believe that they can create even create with their words to where you and I don't need to petition God anymore. We don't need to ask God because we can just speak it. Are you listening? Satan's very subtle and he is trying to get you and I to bypass God. That's why when Paul saw these individuals praying to the unknown God, he said, you're too superstitious. He said, you're ignorantly worshiping an unknown God. He said, I saw this inscription. He said, it says to the unknown God, who you ignorantly worship, who you ignorantly petition. Now, folks, listen to me. I'm not here for some kind of entertainment for you. I'm here to help you. I want you to get answers to your prayers. But if you're going to get answers to your prayers, you're going to have to ask God. You're going to have to petition God. You're going to have to go to God in humility and ask Him. Petition Him. Now, Jesus said, knock and keep knocking. How long should I knock on the door, Lord? He said, until the door's open. How much do you want that answer to your prayer? Are you just going to knock and then quit and give up? How badly do you need that answer? Someone out there that's listening. Do you know someone that needs a healing, needs deliverance, needs uh, maybe deliverance from cancer? Are you just going to knock a few times? So you're going to keep knocking until the doors open, until the answer comes. Until you hear the Lord say, I will heal them. And then you have a word from God. Are you listening? But see, we don't pray like that today, do we? The old saints used to pray until they prayed through. Have you ever heard of that term? Praying through? The old saints would petition God. They'd wait before God until they got an answer, folks. Sometimes all night long. Sometimes for days. Amen. 
pressing in, pressing in, folks. When's the last time you pressed in in prayer? When's the last time you really sought the face of God until the answer came? No, we don't pray like that, do we? We just blab it and grab it. And we think when we grab it, we think God's the one that gave it to us. Didn't you know the devil can answer prayer too? I'm going to tell you, folks, we better get serious about prayer. We better get serious about praying in faith. Because not everything that comes into our life came from the Lord. Amen. Don't don't get upset with God when something negative comes into your life that you prayed for. I will tell you, God will never send something into your life. Never will He send something in your life to destroy you. Something into your life to hurt you. But He'll send things into your life that will help you. And you may think it's destroying you. Amen? Even Job thought for a little while that God was trying to slay him. But he learned the secret. He learned the truth. God's not trying to slay me. He's putting life in me. Amen. When he's tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Folks, I want you to understand this. Because if you don't understand the fundamentals of getting an answer to prayer, you're not going to get an answer to prayer. We must... Pray in faith, through faith. Are you listening? You and I in ourselves have no merit before God. Jesus said, when you pray in my name, when you ask in my name, amen? You and I cannot go to the Father and ask the Father anything in our own name. We must go through Jesus. And when we pray in His name, we're praying in His authority. Through His authority. And what is His name? And what is the Lord's authority? Faith. It's faith. Now, I want to spend just a moment on this, too. There's not many faiths. You're hearing today, this is my faith, and that's my faith, and this is my faith. No, there's only one faith. A religion is not a faith. There are not many faiths. There's only one faith. And there's only one God. And one faith, folks. There are not many faiths. There's only one God and one God to petition. And there's only one God that answers prayer. And when you try to pray to an unknown God or some other re- through some other religion, don't expect you're going to get an answer from the God of heaven. Now, my people, the church today, has become too superstitious in so many ways to where we think that we can answer our own prayers, where we think that we have the power to answer our own petitions. You think that's strange? Jesus talked about the Pharisee that stood thus with himself. He prayed thus with himself. While this sinner wouldn't even look up to heaven, smote on his breast, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Which one of these went away justified? The man that wouldn't even look up to heaven, that said, Be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. The self-righteous Pharisee stood thus with himself, the Bible says. He prayed to himself. Now, I'm going to tell you, folks, if you're not praying in faith, through faith, in the name of Jesus Christ, through his authority, you're not petitioning heaven. Are you listening? You're not getting heaven's attention. Heaven only understands faith. God only answers faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Did you hear that? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is 
and that he is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. Jesus said, when you pray, he said, pray believing. Pray believing. Jesus said, knock and keep knocking. Lord, what do you mean knock and keep knocking? He's teaching us how to pray. It's like going to someone's door and you need something. You just keep knocking until the door opens. Now, a lot of times, folks may go knock at a door and there's nobody on the other end. Nobody in, nobody inside. Nobody's going to ever open that door because there's nobody in there. But what I want you to understand is, this is not the case with God. Amen. There is somebody in there. And the door will open. But you got to keep on knocking, glory to God. Until the door is open. Hallelujah. God is true to his word. He's faithful. We just don't petition him anymore. We just don't pray until we pray through anymore. We just do not know how to pray, folks. Because if we knew how to pray, we'd be getting answers to our prayers. Amen. Prayer is dependence on God. You must depend on Him. You're asking God to do something or give something that you don't have. You're you're petitioning God for something that you can't do, that nobody can do for you except Him. There's not a man on the earth that can cure cancer, but there's a God in heaven that can heal, deliver. Amen? Can give new blood. Give you a blood transfusion. He did it for Henry Groover. Gave Henry Groover brand new blood. Totally free of cancer today. His whole body was full of cancer. He had no electrolytes in his eyes. That's just one example, brothers and sisters. Now, God will take a minister through many different trials to where he has to learn how to believe God and put his faith in God to get an answer to prayer so that he can teach the people how to believe God. If the man of God doesn't believe God, then how are the people going to believe? No, there needs to be somebody that leads. There needs to be somebody that leads by example. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, I have not been, I haven't taken any medicine in years for nothing, not even an aspirin. I used to take Excedrin, extra strength Excedrin for migraines. I don't even take that anymore. I do not take any medicine, folks. So when I tell you faith works, when I tell you that when you pray in faith that it, that God does answer, I'm telling you he answers glory to God. Because I don't depend on the drugs of this world. I don't depend on the hospitals. I don't depend on the doctors. Are you listening? My pastor that has passed away, uh, his mother was praying one day and God said to her, he said, the two hardest things for God's people to believe God for are their teeth and their eyes. And why is that? Because it's so easy to get those things taken care of by man, right? But did you know that when you wear glasses, it actually is making your eyes worse? Did you know that? When you wear glasses, what it does is it does not allow your, the muscles in your eyes to be exercised. It relaxes your muscles. It's making your eyes worse. Did you know that? In fact, what our eyes really need is exercise. And they have proven that if you do the exercises every day consistently, your eyes will get better. Why? Because there's a muscle in your eye and it needs to be exercised. You see? Now, how can 
we prevent our teeth from rotting out and having to go to dentists and take care of them, brush them, floss them, take care of them. Folks, we depend on man too much. Amen? You and I depend on man too much. We really do. And I say you and I because I'm not going to say I'm above you. There are areas where I still have a lack of faith. Oh yeah, I do. I have a lack of faith in some areas. But I'm getting better. Praise God. I'm learning. I'm learning that I must believe God. I'm learning that I must have faith. And having faith is not just me believing in my mind and and speaking it with my mouth. No, that's not faith. I must petition God and get a word from Him. Amen? He must give me an answer. My pastor used to say God's word is signed, sealed, and settled in heaven. No power in this world or the world to come can alter or change His word. When you get a word from God, there's nobody that can alter that word. Amen? You have a decree from God. You have a declaration. Amen. And you can declare that word. Amen. And there's not a devil in hell. There's nothing that can stop that word from coming to pass. It will come to pass when God says it. We may not see it right away. Amen. But it will come. That's where we fail. Just like Abraham. He began to get weak and started believing that what Sarah was telling him was true. I got to go through this other woman now. Well, God never changed his mind. Abram, what are you doing? And that's what you and I do, people. Amen? Until the answer comes. It's coming. The answer is going to come. And that is faith. If God said it, He'll do it, people. Are you listening to me? We have need of patience. Patience, endurance. God is testing us. He's testing how long we're going to endure if we really believe. Now, this is what I've learned from the Lord. If God, if God gives you real faith, people, He'll give you the answer immediately because real faith is answered. And sometimes God has allowed me to operate in the gift of faith. Now, that's not the same thing as just your everyday growing in faith. God will give you the gift of faith to believe Him for supernatural answers. To answer your prayers supernaturally. That's a gift of faith. You could be someone that has little faith or even no faith, and then all of a sudden, you all of a sudden, for one petition or something that you need... For, And God gives you faith to believe Him for that and the answer comes immediately. Or a miracle takes place. That's because God allowed you to operate in the gift of faith. But when you have faith in the sense of growing in faith, that is growing in measure by measure. As you receive the Word of God, you're growing in measure. Are you listening? Every one of us must grow in the measure of faith until we reach the fullness of faith. But the gift of faith is something God can give to a babe in Christ. And they can believe God to do anything, folks, when you're operating in the gift of faith. And I have found that the gift of faith usually doesn't operate in a self-centered way. I have yet to see the gift of faith operate for me, myself, and I. But if I believe God, and I'm praying, and I'm seeking God for somebody else, I've had times where God has given me the gift of faith that that other person that I'm petitioning God for will receive what they need. Are you listening? But there is that where you and I can grow to the fullness of faith where we no longer even need need the gift of faith because we have grown to the fullness of faith. Jesus walked in the fullness, brothers and sisters. 
This is what Paul the Apostle was talking about when he said, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that lives in me. The life I now live, I live in the faith, by the faith of the Son of God. He said, it's no longer I that liveth, I'm crucified with Christ. Paul began to learn that there is a faith, amen, that you can walk in, praise God, where you don't have to be in unbelief and doubt, where you can be unshakable. Amen. We see a man called Smith Wigglesworth. He walked in unshakable faith. Oh, yes, he did. When his wife was leaving this world, he picked her body. uh, Now, that was somebody he was praying for. That was somebody else. That wasn't his wife. This person that was dead, he picked him up and said, walk. Amen. This is facts. These are things that have been written down. And the, and the person began to walk. But when Smith Wigglesworth's wife uh, died, left, was leaving this world, he began to petition God, calling her back into this world. And she came back and she said, Smith, what are you doing? And she said, it's so beautiful over there. She says, I, I want to stay. And he stopped petitioning God. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand, God does answer prayer. But you must pray in faith, believing. That means you and I must grow in faith. How do we do that? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more you hear the Word of God, the more that Word of God is filling you up, you're being filled with faith. Are you listening, people? This idea today that we can speak things and just, you know, God's just going to give us anything we want and just we don't even have to receive it from God. We just speak it into existence. You and I don't speak anything into existence. This word of faith movement today and the New Agers and uh, all this, you know, law of attraction and it's all lies. It's smoke and mirrors. You and I can't speak anything into existence. Are you listening, people? But we can petition God and he can speak things into existence. And he does. Amen? Amen. He spoke the world into existence. Did he not? Amen. Let there be and there was. But if we'll petition God, he'll speak some things into existence for you and I. Amen. I remember reading about a woman that had this huge mountain that was obscuring her from being able to see. She, it was in her way from seeing the ocean and the sunset from her window in the kitchen. And for years, for an, this, this mountain was an eyesore to her. And she just kept on asking God. She kept on petitioning God. She said, God, your word says if you speak to a mountain, you can remove a mountain. Well, somewhere along the way, God must have given her the faith to believe because it wasn't many years, not too many years later after she'd just been petitioning God that the excavators started coming in, decided they were going to put, the, the city was decided they were going to put a highway through that area. And before she left this world, the highway was implemented and she was able to see the ocean with the sunset. Oh yeah, we serve a great God, people. It may not happen the way we want it to, It may not happen when we want it to. God never said, when you ask, I'll give it to you right away. Amen. But I've been learning in my own walk with the Lord, people. There are times when God answers immediately to my prayers. Immediately. But then there's those prayers that I have to keep on petitioning, keep on asking. Why doesn't God answer every prayer immediately? If he answered our prayers immediately, every single prayer we pray, where would be the test of faith? Where would be the need for patience? 
Amen? Where would be the need for endurance if every time we asked God, He immediately gave us the answer to our prayer? But I will tell you, when you have come to the place where you now walk in the character of Christ, there's no need for God to test you anymore. There comes a place, brothers and sisters, where you don't have to be tested anymore. There comes a place, brothers and sisters, where God won't test you for your own individual walk with Him anymore, but He'll test you to be, bring glory to Himself. Are you listening? That God will bring you and I to perfection, and then in the eyes of others, He'll test His own Word in us to prove to others around us that His Word is true. And that's when you see someone, a great man of God, that has to endure cancer, has to endure some sickness or something. Why would God allow that person to go through that? Because they have the character, because they have the nature, because they have the wherewithal that God has put within them to believe God, to bring glory to God. When you think about Lazarus, Jesus said, this this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God. Amen? Glory to God, people. And there are things that some of you that have the character of Christ and you're wondering, why, Lord, would I have to go through this? Why is it that Job had to go through what he went through? Amen? It wasn't just for Job. It was for Job's friends. It was for Job's family. It was for Job's wife. It was for others. Amen? And there are things that you and I will go through, not just for ourselves. Amen? A lot of times it's to increase the faith of others around us. It's to bring glory to God ultimately. Hallelujah. So don't think just because you're going through something, it's all about you. Many times it's to inspire those around you. If that person can be going through that and have that kind of joy and have that kind of peace and have that kind of resolve, then what's what's my problem? Amen? All the time, God is proving himself. All the time, God is putting his word through tests. Why? Because his word will stand the test. His word is tried seven times, folks. His own word is tried seven times. Now you think about that for a minute. So if God puts his word in you and God produces faith in you, you don't think God's going to test that? It may not be for you, though. It may be for somebody else. But God's word will stand the test. If you've got cancer and the Lord has said, I'm, I've healed you, And you have a word from God. I don't mean that you took a scripture out of the Bible and say, well, by his stripes, I'm healed. Did God give you a word? Do you have real faith? Are you walking in faith? Then that cancer can't stay. It has to leave, folks. And the reason I say cancer and the reason I use that as an example is because that's like an impossible situation, right? That's an impossible thing that many cannot overcome in our in our day. Cancer today is like leprosy was in Jesus' day. I mean, it's something that's just, you know, you, you can't get healed of. You can't get delivered of unless Jesus does it. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, There are people that have impossible situations. You may be one of those people right now. You have an impossible condition or an impossible situation in your life. That is perfect for the Lord to answer a prayer. He loves to do the impossible. Amen? Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible when you get a word from God. Folks, please listen to me. When you truly have received a word from God that has produced real faith, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing. Hallelujah. Now, don't think God's going to answer prayer or do something outside of His word or do something outside of the limits of his character that's going to be good for you. 
Now, God will send you a strong delusion. God will send you a lie. God, God will, will deceive you if your motive isn't right. Amen. It's the Lord God that's sending this strong delusion in these last days. Amen. The Lord said, I'll be- help you believe a lie. He said, I'll even choose your delusion. So be careful that you don't get outside of the word of God, that you don't get outside the will of God, that your motive is right when you pray. Because the scripture says, you have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? So you can petition and ask God with the wrong motive. Are you listening? It comes down to humility in our motive being right, our intent being right. Amen? If our motive and our intent is right, we have a word from God, praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, there will be joy unspeakable and full of glory. Jesus said, ask that your joy may be full. He said, you haven't asked yet. I will tell you that when you truly have received an answer from God in which he is blessing you, an answer that is in his will, that is in the confines of his word, you will have joy and others will rejoice with you. But when it's an answer that comes outside the will of God, that's outside of the character of God, that's outside of God's Uh, intentions for your life it's not going to bring joy brothers and sisters it'll bring sorrow upon sorrow but when your motive is right when your intent is right when your heart is right when your spirit is right and you're praying in faith you have a word from god it will bring joy unspeakable and full of glory and that joy will overflow and it will touch others around you That's the way the kingdom is supposed to work, people. That's the way God expects you and I to receive from Him. I see so many people, they take one scripture out of the Bible and they try to make it the whole. Instead of taking all the scriptures and bringing them together to get a perfect understanding of what God is saying, They'll take one scripture. Well, Jesus said, if I speak to a mountain, it'll be removed. But then they don't look at the other scriptures where Jesus says, knock and keep knocking until the doors open. You've got to take all the scriptures and bring them together to get a perfect understanding. Because we have folks today that are just taking one scripture or a preacher taking one scripture and preaching it to his congregation. And then they go out of the church thinking that they can speak to mountains. No, you can't speak to a mountain. You speak to a mountain all day long. It's not moving. But if you get a word from God, if you'll petition God, are you listening, people? If you'll seek the face of God until the answer comes, when God gives you a word, you can even actually stand in front of a mountain and speak to a literal mountain, and it will move right there before your eyes Are you listening to me? Because you have a word from God. Now, will God do that? Do you think God's going to do that? I don't think so. I really do. I don't think God's ever going to give a person the faith to go out and stand in front of a mountain and say, get out of the way or move. He hasn't done it yet. And I don't think he's going to do it. I think what Jesus was teaching us was a principle. Now, what would be a mountain in our life today that we need to get out of the way? There are many mountains right? Impossible obstacles that are in our way. Cancer is a big one, right? These are examples. You may be facing an impossible situation, a mountain in your life, folks. And I will say this, many times that thing that you think is a mountain in your life, it actually may just be a molehill and the devil's magnifying it, making you think it's bigger than it is. We need so desperately, so desperately to understand 
the scriptures. Amen. I think about this this eunuch that was in the in the chariot going along and uh the spirit spoke to Philip and said join yourself to this chariot. He got up there and sat with the man. He said, "Do you understand what you're reading?" He said, how can I understand and accept someone guide me, accept someone teach me, accept someone show me? And that's what I'm doing, brothers and sisters. I'm trying to help you to understand what the Word of God is saying. Jesus, walking on the road of Emmaus, he opened to them the Scriptures. Amen? He gave them understanding of the Scriptures. That's what we need. We need to be taught. We need an understanding of the Word of God. The church today lacks understanding. The church today lacks wisdom. The church today lacks desperately an understanding of how to pray. But I believe after this message, you may may actually understand how to pray a little bit better than you used to. Because prayer is not just getting you know, mustering up some kind of a word inside yourself and speaking. No. Or if I could just muster in myself. No. It's when you get a word from God. Hallelujah. Get a word. Get a word from the Creator. Get a word from Him. Petition Him. Seek Him. Until He answers. Amen? Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what your situation is. You may be facing. Seek God. Until he answers. Seek him. Until you hear his voice. And when you get a word from God. You have it. Sign Sealed, settled. And you can declare it. Hallelujah. And I will tell you, people will laugh you in the face. They will. They'll mock you. They will. You can't let that affect you. I'm still waiting. God gave me years ago when I was praying about going to Africa, God gave me a a vision when I got down on my knees and I was praying. God gave me a quick vision and I saw a check for over $30,000. I'm still believing God for that check. And my own, at the time, my, my ex-wife, her father, her dad, which is my ex-father-in-law, he actually laughed at me one day when I mentioned that. People will mock you, but I know what God showed me. Well, Brother Joseph, it's been years. You still haven't received that check. It's still coming. Hallelujah. It's coming. Because after the vision and after I saw this check, I said, Lord, what is this? Immediately, he gave me a scripture in the Old Testament. Pay off your debt and live off the rest. It's still coming. I have a feeling it's going to be more than that because, you know, time goes on. uh, The Lord just keeps on blessing. But at the time, it was a check for only 30. How much can you believe God for? Folks, I've got a lot of work to do. I've got a lot of souls to reach. I've got a ministry to build. You understand what I'm saying to you? I've got something to do for God, and it does require money. And there's no limits. We're the ones that place limits on God. I say this many times, and it is so true. A billionaire is limited comparing to me. Because my God is limitless. A, A billionaire is limited, right? Bill Gates is limited. He can't speak to the sick. He can't lay hands on the sick. And then be healed. 
He has to call uh, vi- uh, uh, vaccines. He calls them miracles. Billionaires don't have the answer, people. I'm richer than a billionaire. I'm richer than a trillionaire. It will say, Brother Joseph, you don't look like you're very rich. Oh, yeah. Rich toward God. Rich in faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else out there can witness to attest to that? Are you rich in faith? Glory to God. God has chose the poor of this world rich in faith. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Glory to God. The billionaires don't have that. Are you listening? They can't do that. We are richer, folks. Far richer than the richest, wealthiest individual on this planet. They may have all their toys. They may have their mansions and their all those things that make them look like they're wealthy. But if they don't have faith in God, they have nothing. Nothing. When they leave this world, they'll be like the rich man. Crying in hell. One drop of that water. Just one drop of that water. Well, I hope something I've said today, brothers and sisters, has helped you. 